you are watching Redicon. Rotator cuff disease, shoulder pain in general is the most common complaint made by the patient to their physician, and two-thirds of these patients actually related to the impingement and rotator cuff disease. Uh, there are still debate about the origin of the pain. Is it caused by the compression of the rotator cuff tendons, long head of biceps, or uh, the subacromial subdeltoid bursa between the humeral head and the coracoacromial arch? Probably most of the theories goes uh, and that probably the pain is originating from the synovium of the capsule and the subacromial subdeltoid bursa because uh, they're generally the tendons are relatively painless and in, uh, the nerve are uh, very minimal. So what are the causes of the rotator cuff disease? Multifactorial, could be related to the overuse. It could be related to abnormal in the arch. It could be due to hypervascularity uh, or age related. So let's start about the sum of the causes of the external impingement. This is, now we're gonna look to the acromiohumeral interval and look to the acromioclavicular joint and see what things can cause impingement on the rotator cuff uh, between the acromion and the humeral head. It could be due to acromioclavicular joint ostified, could be due to subacromial spare, could be due to the type of or the shape of the acromion, could be due to the sloping, either lateral down sloping or anterior down sloping of the acromion or related to the os acromialia. And I'm gonna discuss one by one and show you example of each. So this is an example you can see here, there is severe degenerative changes at the acromioclavicular joint with significant edema. But if you look carefully, there is thickening of the under surface of the acromion and it is indenting and deforming the bursal surface of supraspinatus. This is this is little bit away from the joint. This is what we call the subacromial spare. Lateral down slobing of the acromion, if we look carefully to the normal relation of the distal clavicle with the acromion, they usually are in the same line. There is no dis, there is no subluxation and there is no angulation. So relation, this is normal clavicle with the acromion. If you get the acromion more of down slobing, this is what we call lateral down slobing of the acromion. You can see it here in this image. Actually, this is the normal, this is the abnormal. This usually congenital and can be seen even in asymptomatic patients. So uh, I don't uh, give conclusion that's causing the impingement rather than actually giving the fact there is lateral down slobing. So this is what we call lateral downslobing of the acromion. Anterior downslobing of the acromion, this is seen only in the sagittal. Normally, the anterior part of the acromion actually is higher than the posterior. So it's more of this appearance. Sorry, so this is the normal. The anterior part of the acromion is higher than the posterior part or more cranially and this is more caudally. The anterior downslobing is actually opposite when the anterior part actually is lower than the posterior part and this is at risk of impingement. So this is what we call the anterior downslobing of the acromion. Here you get uh, some degenerative changes of the acromion, but if you look at the acromioclavicular joint, if you look carefully, the alignment between the distal clavicle and the distal acrom and the acromion, actually there is offset, there is inferior subluxation, and this is usually related to repetitive stress with weight lifter or previous trauma. We call it inferior offset or inferior subluxation of the acromion. It, it makes sense this will cause narrowing of the acromiohumeral interval and might cause impingement. Other causes is osteophyte. As you see here, there is osteophyte of the distal clavicle. And when we see this, it's very important to mention it, particularly if it's indenting and supraspinatus, because surgeon might consider doing distal clavicle osteotomy in addition to the acromioplasty. Os acromiali, which is a non-united ossification at the tip of the acromion. 
it is very important to mention, particularly if you see a fluid cleft between the os and the underlying acromion, that does indicate there is pseudoarthrosis of movement of the os, acrom of the, of the os acromiali. Uh, so what is how it's uh, causing impingement? Every time the lateral head of the acromion is contracted, it will bring the os acromiali because it's freely mobile and push it against the supraspinatus and can result in underlying impingement. So it's very important to mention it when it's there, seen best in the axial images, and especially if there is a fluid cleft between it and the underlying acromion. Abnormal shape of the acromion. So if you get this configuration of the acromion, which we call the hocked morphology, this is at risk of impingement, as you see here, hocked acromion. This video is presented in collaboration with Radicon Institute of Radiology. You are welcome to subscribe to our YouTube channel and click on the notification bell for updates. For more modules in radiology CMEs, please visit our website www.radicon.org.